So we've been talking about Android as a layered protocol stack, and we've been focusing primarily on the details of the OS kernel for the last several lectures. Now we're going to talk about what's called infrastructure middleware and give you an overview of some of the key concepts, first giving a more general overview of what middleware is. So we'll talk about what is middleware and why it matters. Uh, there's lots and lots and lots more information about this topic on my website. Uh, that's sort of the area of research I've done for quite a long time. And then I'll talk briefly about how Android supports these layers of middleware and middleware infrastructure. So first of all, what is middleware? Well, middleware is basically software that resides on top of the operating systems and networking protocol, which in turn reside on top of the hardware, but underneath the applications. And it provides a number of benefits or capabilities to, to either users and or developers. So one thing it does is it allows developers to leverage advances in hardware and software technologies without having to keep rewriting their apps. So it's sort of a, it's an encapsulation layer, if you will. And so it allows the apps that are built to the middleware to take advantage of improvements in multi-core CPUs, networking, storage, power, that are often exposed by the operating system in different non-standard or at least non-consistent APIs. So were you to program your app directly to the operating system, you'd get locked in, and then when innovations come along, it would be hard to retrofit them transparently. Another thing you can do is to make it easier to evolve your apps to handle new requirements and new environments. For example, new form factors, such as wearables, and maybe new missions, such as providing reliable communication to first responders after natural disasters, where the fixed infrastructure of the network has been knocked down by a hurricane or tornadoes or floods or whatnot, and instead you have mobile ad hoc networks and, and you have to make your system work effectively in that environment. Another thing you can do is raise the level of abstraction to program networked and distributed systems by not requiring developers to, to code directly to these horrible low-level byte stream APIs we were just talking about, but instead give them these reusable common services that are application-oriented, like geolocation, federated um, single sign-on, transparent load balancing, caching, and so on. These are all things that are quite valuable and useful that you really don't have to invent yourself every time. And, and lots of what Android provides you are exactly those things. And another thing you can do with middleware is you can enforce end-to-end -end quality of service and performance by doing various kinds of tighter grain control over latency, throughput, replication, um, caching again, load balancing, all these other things that can speed things up quite a bit. And the middleware is responsible for managing all the resources in a distributed system. Uh, so a good example of that, just something you're probably familiar with, is the sharding techniques that folks like Google use for their MapReduce algorithms. So when you go out and do a web query, it doesn't just go to one server, it's spread around, and those queries are all run in parallel to balance the load and then sent back. And it's not the OS that's, I mean, the OS is involved, but it's not the OS that's doing the sharding, it's middleware that does the sharding. Peyton. Yeah. Yeah, great question. So typically, a given operating system like Linux or <laughs> Windows or Mac OS, which are all slightly different, as you probably know, they'll all provide you with their own OS or vendor-centric way or even you know, standard-centric way of handling multi-core. So Linux handles multi-core in a certain way. Windows handles multi-core in a slightly different way. Um, Mac does it more or less like Linux, but not quite the same, right? So the problem is if you write your app directly on top of the operating system, you've got to pretty much make a choice. You've got to say, I'm going to use Windows. Well, now you're locked into Windows, right? So if you write to middleware, then you write to the middleware API, which could be something like the data distribution service, DDS, or it could be Android, right? And then that shields you from all the underlying differences in the operating systems. So if you think of an operating system as being a hardware abstraction layer, right? It abstracts you from the details of the ARM chip versus the Intel chip versus the PowerPC chip. You can think of some layers of middleware as being an abstraction layer for the operating systems, which are also different, right? So it's just raising the level of abstraction another notch or so. 
They're layers of middleware, just like they're layers of network protocols, right? So these are the network protocol layers that you may all know and love. Here are some of the middleware layers. And um, Android's middleware infrastructure, which is what we're going to focus on after the quiz in the next class, really falls into the host infrastructure middleware layer and the distribution middleware layer. Those are the things that add additional stuff on top of the Linux kernel, the Android Linux kernel. There's also something called the hardware abstraction layer, which is Android-centric, and we'll talk more about that. There's the runtime execution layer and the libraries, and then there's also the application framework layer. These lower layers here, the part that's kind of green and, and yellow and a little bit of blue called core libraries, that's what I call middleware infrastructure. And then these other things up here, application framework layer, that's middleware, but it's higher layer middleware. We'll talk about that. Okay, so that was just a quick overview. We will cover these topics in more detail next, but right now it's quiz time.